Good morning, folks. Hope everybody's doing well. Happy Sunday. I uh, wasn't really going to do anything. I was just going to kind of veg. But it's all over the news, and you heard it last night, and this is just getting out of hand. So, Denver. We know Denver is another blue state stronghold. Uh, well, Colorado's a blue state stronghold, and Denver is a deeply blue city. So we know that. There was apparently a Patriot rally, and there was apparently the BLM Antifa soup drive. Now, I, I don't know if you guys remember about three weeks or a month ago when they busted the food truck for uh, providing logistical support to um, the mostly peaceful but slightly fiery and violent protests. And then, uh, then they busted the blonde broad, whatever the hell her name was, for the U-Haul full of shields and bats and placards. More logistical support for the mostly peaceful protesters. Last night, a fella got shot right in the head. And it, it, it's just come to the point it has just gotten to a head, I want to say. Like a pustule. The right can't set up a rally without being challenged by the left. And the left says that this is okay because when they hold a mostly peaceful but slightly fiery and violent rally with minimal amounts of looting and the occasional accidental murder, um, will the right just show up to antagonize them? Sounds about right, because we have gotten this country so divided over such... Normally I would call it bullshit, but in this day and age, it, it's really hard to not quantify it for what it is. Uh, it's a subversion game. They, they have gone out of their way now to keeping us so divided that there is no chance for discourse. You can't have a civil conversation in an uncivil society, and at this point, you know, the majority of Europe has been force-fed the crap that we're all savages over here. Now, there's a lot of Europeans that come to visit and they go home with a slightly different opinion, but they still look at us like we're crazy because we're Americans and that's our national identity. Our national identity is a bunch of friggin' rabble-rousers who got sick and tired of taking orders from somebody they didn't... Let's face it. It was chosen by a god, but it might not have been their god that chose them. So, we're like... I don't want to pay you taxes. I'm tired of your bullshit. We get painted as hyper-aggressive. The ugly American stereotype, right? Oh, we're loud and we're brash and we demand things. Kind of how we do things over here for the most part. Um, violent. You will always hear about how violent America is. Yeah, we are pretty violent. I don't doubt that for a second. And the, the majority of your violence comes from places where your rights have been restricted, which is kind of how the country was formed in the first place. Big circle, you see. But now we get to this, where... This guy was hired by the event through the Pinkerton Company, and if you 
watch the old West shows and movies and stuff. You know, Pinkerton was a detective agency, and I think Bat Masterson worked for him for a while. Maybe Wyatt Earp, too. But anyway, they, they were very big in security. If you robbed the train or you robbed the bank, the Pinkerton men had come after you. Been around that long. The fella that did the shoot, and his name is uh, irrelevant because you're not supposed to give fame to these people. That's what they say about mass shooters, anyway. You know, the city had shot one fella. He was hired by Pinkerton, and apparently, Pinkerton doesn't vet their employees very well, or they're having a hard time hiring anybody. But There's a lot of chatter out there that he's Antifa and BLM. He's technically not. He is a hardcore leftist and a Bernie supporter. Probably a bad idea to send someone who's like a Bernie supporter to provide security at a Trump rally. The way it broke down from what I've seen from the... And it, there's really only one set a video, and then there's a second one, and then there's just a third one that's basically the guy shooting on his fucking toes. Um, one idiot in a Black Lives Matter shirt goes up to a bunch of people. Now, these rallies are breaking up. This is the end of the day. This is the end of the event. They've gone through the, gone through the events, breaking up and going home. The altercation starts with fella, looks like he might be Hispanic, with his Black Lives Matter shirt, saying, don't touch me nigger, nigga, sorry, nigga, um, stay away from me, nigga, the, the standard line of rhetoric they used to antagonize these people and try to get a response out of them. You have to see it for what it is, it's baiting. Why would you pay any attention to this person, I have no idea. Right up until the time he comes up and he lays hands on you. That's different. But as long as he isn't touching you, sticks and stones might break your bones. And hollow points might expand on impact. But words won't hurt you. So you blow them off. You ignore them. It drives them even crazier when you give them no traction to their fucking rhetoric. Unfortunately, they allowed it to escalate out. So, I've heard people say that the security guard had instigated on the fella who he winds up shooting. I don't see it on the video. That's not on the tape that I've seen. But apparently, an eyewitness, for what those are fucking worth, said, security guard put hands on the fella first. The fella re, uh, returns the favor by slapping the hat off the security guard's head. What's wrong with this entire scenario? Always de-escalate. Always walk away so you can go home and see your family. There's, there's nothing wrong with not getting involved in a situation like this. Should have walked away when the other idiot was saying, don't touch me, nigga. I would have just been like, go away. I tell you what, I didn't go that way. You're going to follow me? Come on, come on. If the security guard touches him first, he is instigated assault. If this fella slaps the hat off the security guard, he's just as at fault. Now, granted, he was supposedly, allegedly, the recipient first, and he was just returning it. Here's where it gets weird. So once you get off the mainstream sites and you get off uh, Tim Pool and Sticks got the story way too early, so he's way, way out there. He's got all his... It, his video tomorrow will be a better breakdown than the one today, so... Tim Pool did do his leg work, he usually does. I might not agree with him all the time. Did a good job on this.
Patriot fella pulls bear spray. Security guard pulls what in the old days would have been called a race gun. So I, I can't really get a good look at it. But the pellet gun, okay? Magazines out. Actions cleared. We're safe. All right? See? Plus, pellet guns don't work when there's no gas cartridge in them. Somebody's going to have a fucking meltdown because there's a gun in the video. So he's running something like this. His is black. I don't know if it was the SIG. It could be a Glock. It could be an M&P or an HK. I don't know. But the reason I brought this up is you see this area here? This is a cut in the slide. And on an actual live version of this type of gun, this is an M17. This is the... Uh, the gun SIG won the Army contract with. So this is the new Army sidearm. Except this is the CO2 version. Well, the fella has an optic mounted up here. He has what's known as a red dot. And I, actually, it's a reflex sight. It's a little window with a red dot in the middle. So when you're aiming, you don't have to line up the notch and blade. You literally put the red dot in the middle of what you want to hit. And you hit it. That's why they go on race guns. And two years ago, I would have said it was a race gun because those are the only ones that had them. Now, everybody makes models now that already have the slide notched to take the optic. If I could get better pictures and better looks at video, I would tell you what it is, but I can't. I'm not super Mr. Gun Guy anyway. What you'll notice, too, he also has a weapons light mounted on the front of the, the handgun. Now, he's a security guard. Apparently, he's an armed security guard. I don't know where he got his training from, but he's a shooter because he's not running a cheap rig. So, if it was, you know, a Glock or a SIG or one of the lower ends on, like, the HKs and stuff that are super fucking expensive, it's still an $800 handgun. As a matter of fact, I saw... The SIG 365 XL with the SIG Romeo mounted on top for $7.99 on sale. And the 365 XL retails for somewhere around 6 So that gives you an idea of what we're looking at here. This is not a Saturday night special. And it's not set up. Law enforcement isn't allowed to carry those here. The military, I kind of go out on a limb and say, unless you're special forces and you have special dispensation, is not allowed to carry an optic-equipped pistol. It's going to raise too many red flags and questions. The fact that the security guard working for Pinkerton is carrying, again, high-end weapon. It, it's not a Saturday Night Special. It's not a piece of shit. Should throw some red flags way up in the air. But that's also how he's able to take that shot and put it right in the middle of the guy's face. Now, I've also been seeing stills cut from video. And there's a fella online who um, took the video and tore it down and broke it down. I mean, it, this is only less than 24 hours ago. And these guys are all over this like ants on a piece of friggin' hard candy left out in the sun. Ants all over a picnic, if you will. From some of the ones that are up there, and I have no idea if they've been retouched, and I, I again, you know, I can't edit video to save my friggin' life. It looks like shit had fired first before the guy hit him with the bear spray. Now, he knows the guy has bear spray. It's in his hand through this entire encounter. Bear spray is less than lethal. Even if you have asthma and the bear spray triggered your asthma, it's still considered less than lethal. And from what I've saw online, seen online, sorry, in Colorado, Carrying, using bear spray in a public space a misdemeanor. Okay, misdemeanor. 
in Arizona, if somebody comes after you with less than lethal and you retaliate with lethal force, you're wrong. You escalate it. Because again, your first job is to not wind up dead. You want to go home at the end of the night. You're not required to de-escalate. It's recommended you do. That's the way I was told. There is no winner in this situation. The fellow who got killed was more or less in my age group. There's a picture of him up with his baby grip, uh, little granddaughter, baby girl. Infant at this point, never going to get to know who her grandpa is because this shit happened. I don't know how to wake people up anymore. I do this all the time. Why would you put yourself in that situation? Why would you allow yourself to be spun up? Take the fucking programming box off the wall, put a rock through the front of it, then stick it in a trash can and send it to the dump where it belongs because they're doing you no favors. They're feeding you nothing but disinformation. They're stoking the flames. And it results in something like this happening. They're screaming, he's BLM, he's Antifa, he's got a picture of a Space Invader. This guy isn't even old enough to know when Space Invaders was an actual fucking game. They have no idea how they came up with using this logo. It was from when video games were in arcades. You didn't even have them in the house. That's how old it is. And it's like first gen. And it was like Pong, and then there was Asteroids, Asteroids, I don't know, little triangle ship spins in a circle, shoots rocks, Asteroids, I think, and then Space Invaders, and uh, Centipede, and it blew up, but, you know, old. It doesn't appear to be active, right? He is a leftist. He does support Bernie. That is on his stuff. He did do Occupy Wall Street, but at most, he doesn't seem to be super hyper active leftist BLM. Unless something new turns up, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it on his Twitter page, and I didn't go to his Facebook page, but Tim Pool did. And so... When I first heard this, I thought for sure they're hiring fucking mercenaries now, because that's an assassination. That was my initial take, and that's why I didn't do anything about it, because I hadn't gone on and said, warm up the helicopters, start giving them fucking flying lessons, because I am done with this. In this case, I have no idea what the fuck was going on. If this was an active assassination attempt, he did it really well, and he's going to spend... You know what, even if they knock it down to negligent homicide, 20 years? Inside the clink. The other guy doesn't get to go home at all. And this is a perfect example of an American tragedy that can be avoided. You know how you avoid this? Stop buying into the bullshit. Trump is not the God Emperor. And Biden and Harris are not the fucking devil, although I'm not ruling out Hillary, because... The jury's still out on them. You never see the two of them together, right? You never see Hillary and Satan in the same picture. It's like Superman and Clark Kent. You need to stop listening to the fucking propagandist bullshit. And you also need to remember, if you can walk away from it, fucking walk away from it. These guys are basically cowards, okay? They will not do anything to you as long as there aren't all, 10 of them to one of you. So, if you go to the rally, stay with your boys. When you're leaving the rally, exfil with your boys, okay? Don't get caught by yourself. Do not allow them to bait you and antagonize you so that the headlines can scream, Trump supporters attack. 
because that's what every leftist shithole is going to scream. And this one, I don't think they have the... I don't think they have the ability to pull that off as much as they would love to. If there was actual footage of the Trump supporters slapping this guy in the head, and then this guy pulling a gun and shooting him, they would bill it as he attacked him and he was defending himself, completely ignoring the fact that you're not allowed to escalate to lethal from less than lethal. There's a lot of new gun owners in the country. I, I say this anytime I talk about new gun owners. It's great you went out and bought a gun and you now embrace the Second Amendment. That's fucking wonderful. You need to go out and get trained. You need to take your basic 101 course and learn how to safely handle a firearm so that you're not the idiot that shoots somebody at the fucking gun range. From there, you need to get training training. It's actually fun. It's a good time. I mean, you know what? I enjoy it. Just because I enjoy it doesn't mean you will. Then again, I was raised around guns. I don't own any because they'll just magically leave your house and kill babies. Oh no, I I lost my one antique musket from the in that horrible boating accident. So I would never own a gun except for you know, less than lethal pellet gun. Folks, the, the biggest takeaway from all this is you should avoid trouble whenever possible. It's really not a benefit to anybody's lifestyle. If you're going to go into one of these situations, you have to understand if shit goes sideways, even if you're in the right, you're still going to be in the wrong and most likely fucked. Look at the Kenosha kid, right? He's still sitting in jail. Well, I think he's out on bail, but he's still basically fucked because they're going to prosecute him to the wall. Ken and Karen in St. Louis. St. Louis governor had to come out today and say if they're convicted, he'll pardon them. Why are they even being charged? And the, the, the newest charge against them was, well, she modified the weapon. Yes. She had somebody turn the firing pin around so it could be used as a dummy gun in court. Mr. Soros' puppet is trying to pull anything out that they can. And that's where you get fucked and you, you lose even if you win. is because they will break you financially. Is what it is. I, I just hope we can go back to being America one day because I'm getting kind of sick and tired of this bullshit. Thanks for putting some eyeballs on here, folks. I will catch up with you uh, again later. I wasn't going to do this, but then this just... It, it, all I'm seeing is the bullshit that goes with this. The fellow didn't need to die. This fellow didn't need to shoot him. This fellow's going to spend a long time in jail. Who's the winner? You know who the winner is? The propaganda machine that's going to make hay out of this. Well, it's not going to be as good for him as they want. Like Nick Sandman and Kenosha Kyle. So, all right, folks. Have a good Sunday. I will catch up with you later. Still too early for beer. It's only like ten thirty in the morning. Skull. <laughs>